Of all the video games out there, the one series that strikes me as being the easiest to produce a live action movie or series for is Resident Evil. The game series itself is littered with a simple narrative, so why can't they do it? Hello there, welcome to Saber Duel Gaming at the Movies, where we take a look at some of your favourite video games in movie form, and today we are looking at Resident Evil. So, Resident Evil is a game that is literally based off a zombie movie, so that would make it pretty simple to make into a movie itself, right? Well, there's been no shortage of them. We had a whole series featuring Milia Jovovich, as well as the more recent Welcome to Raccoon City, and of course the Netflix abomination, which perhaps gave us one of the most cringeworthy and vomit-inducing scenes in all of television history. Thanks, Netflix. But today we're going to look back to right where it started, with the first ever Resident Evil movie from 2002 starring Milia Jovovich. When this movie was released, I was very much its core audience. I'd recently played Resident Evil 2, 3 and Code Veronica Rex, getting into the franchise a little bit late. So when the movie was released, I was even more excited than most to see it. I was also a fan of Amelia Jovovich, so they even had me on board with that. But after watching the whole thing, I was kind of left a little bit confused. I just couldn't decide if I liked it or not. At first glance, Resident Evil might seem to be the simplest and easiest franchise to turn into not just a movie, but an entire series of movies. If instead of thinking it as a video game, you think of it as a book, you could literally do Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2, 3, Code Veronica X, and 4 as an entire series of movies. They've each got really relatable and likeable characters in, They've got a clear structure, story, narrative, a series of really entertaining villains. What more could you want? Well, as is always the case in these things for some reason, apparently they wanted an original story. Why, I can never quite figure out, but there seems to be this drive to take a franchise that exists and use the skeleton of it to tell our own original story. And... That's kind of what they do here. Not only is the environment visually very different to what we would see in the games, yes, you have a mansion in the middle of the woods, but one we only see for a matter of minutes before making our way down to the hive, and even the hive, the laboratory down below Raccoon City, it looks nothing like what we see within the games. But more important is the severe lack of characters from the games. We don't get to see Chris or Claire. We don't get to see Jill or Leon. Any of those main characters that we see across the first few games, none of them are here. Some of them will come later in the franchise, but we're just looking at this one movie for now. Instead, we get a cast of relatively interesting characters in fairness, playing a sort of amnesia role, trying to piece together what's happened as the story progresses. But... That's not something that ever happened within the Resident Evil games. And this is kind of where my confusion really starts to fit in. You see, I kind of like the story they're telling. I like the idea of these characters trying to piece together exactly where they fit. Who are their friends? Who are their enemies? Are they lovers? Do they know each other? Or are they destined to kill each other? Has one of them betrayed the other? They just don't know. Meanwhile, you have these army guys who have come in and their entire intention is to shut down the facility, but something else is operating against them and putting them all at risk. None of them know what to expect, even though we do, and chaos ensues. It's quite fun. It's just not Resident Evil. Other than the generic terms Umbrella, Raccoon City, and oh look there's zombies, this isn't actually telling the story of Resident Evil at all. But the more I think about it, there is actually some excuse for that. As much as I like to look at the Resident Evil story and see it as perfect for a movie, well the vast majority of that story 
takes place as one person on their own. That plays out fantastically for a game wandering from room to room, finding the next key and the next medal to unlock another door. But as a movie, that's not quite as entertaining as I'd like to think it is. Now, that's no excuse to not just throw in a Leon, a Claire, a Chris Redfield, but maybe, just maybe, if they'd done that whilst telling this completely different story, people would have been even more pissed off. At least if these are original characters, they haven't twisted or changed the story of anybody in the process. So is that a positive? Maybe? I still think there would have been a very simple way of having that group of characters and instead of having them split up like they do in the game, have them stick together for the vast majority of the story. But that's easy to say. Would people have accepted that? Who knows? Prior to doing this review, I actually re-watched the movie one more time. I've actually watched it loads of times, but I just fancied watching it again. I also thought it was only fair given I was going to give my view on it. But the one thing that really stood out as to why it doesn't feel like Resident Evil is maybe the music. During the action scenes in this, we either get heavy metal music or really fast-paced techno rave dance crap. The Resident Evil games featured a very classical and eerie, dramatic, but also beautiful soundtrack. Everything was done with tension building, not this high-paced, adrenaline fueled thrill ride. The tone of the actual movie, the music that sets that tone, just sets a completely different feel. In a sense, it's not actually trying to be Resident Evil. Something I find really interesting is that it was initially penciled in for this movie to be written and directed by George Romero, the man who did the original Night of the Living Dead films, series, etc. He actually was brought on board to do the advertising for the Resident Evil 2 game. This game was based on his movies and they almost went full circle and brought him in to do it. But one of the main reasons it was turned down was what he was doing was too close to the video games. Figure that out. You had the perfect director and he wanted to make it loyal to the game. And that tells me one thing. They weren't really trying to make Resident Evil. They wanted to make a story with zombies and Resident Evil was a franchise with a pre-existing fan base. But in the end, judging it as its own movie, where do we land on this? Well, Rotten Tomatoes critic score gives it 36%, but the critic score really means less than absolute bollocks to me. The audience score sits closer to 67%, which puts it in the sort of average, okay, kind of fun if I'm a bit drunk range. But as a movie, success isn't really down to ratings, it's down to money. Globally, the movie made 103 million plus. Now, whether that's a success or not comes down to how much it costs to make, but the fact that they made an absolute ton more of these movies said that it must have been reasonably successful. No one makes these things just for fun. But one nugget of information that I discovered whilst looking up about this movie really sums it up for me. James Cameron, famous director behind the Terminator movies, actually identified it as probably his biggest guilty pleasure. And that kind of sums it up. It's fun. It is fun. It can't be denied that this is a fun movie. It's entertaining, it's a bit of a thrill ride, it's brainless, but it is entertaining. So, where did my issues come? Why couldn't I figure out how I felt about it? Well, it's simple. I enjoyed the movie. I just didn't want to. It was taking something I loved, Resident Evil, a franchise I adore, 
and using it, bastardizing it to a degree, and I mean that word literally, and yet I still enjoyed it. That was the issue. In fairness, if they'd stuck closer to the story of the actual game, would I have enjoyed it any more? Or would I have just found it more offensive because they got key things wrong? I just don't know. In a sense, though, I have to admit that I enjoy this movie. I kind of like to think of it as an alternate reality version of the Resident Evil story. Later on in this movie series, the next one, which has a different name depending where in the world you sit, is far more like the actual games, kind of like a cross between Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. We certainly see Nemesis, which is automatically a lot more like the actual games. But then after that one, it branches off into some weird Mad Max territory, which is even less like Resident Evil, so I just can't describe what I feel about it. But focusing on this one movie, how would I score it? Well, you almost have to score it in two different ways. As to how it sits as a movie on its own, this is really entertaining, dumb fun. You're not going to win any Oscars with this, but like Cameron said, it's a guilty pleasure. It's certainly a movie that is fun enough to slam in, watch and just enjoy. Even that sort of annoying, obnoxious techno music that's played is quite fitting for that. And other than that, it actually has a damn good soundtrack. But if you're a fan of Resident Evil, the actual games, that is no guarantee you're going to be a fan of this movie. This movie is for the kind of person that enjoys these kinds of movies. These high-paced, dumb, fun, entertaining, action-packed, with a little bit of zombies thrown in. But that's not what the games were like. They were thought-provoking. They were horrifying. Not just because there's a zombie running at you, because of the narrative and the context to some of those zombies, to some of those moments. This doesn't have that. Resident Evil was a thinking person's game. This movie ain't for anyone who's got a thought. In the end, rating Resident Evil does come down to whether you're trying to rate it as a movie in itself or a video game adaption. I'm going to try and look at it as a film because that is what I'm reviewing and I kind of hate to admit it but maybe it's my guilty pleasure too. I'd have to give it a 7 out of 10 unless I'm thinking of the games in which case it probably gets a 4 out of 10 and that's being complimentary. Maybe that's just because I had a crush on Melia Jovovich. Either way, have you seen this movie? What did you think? Comment below, let me know. And if you think I'm being too kind to it, just remember, there's always this you could go and watch instead if you wanted to. Oh my god, it's worse than I remember. And if you want me to review any more of the Resident Evil movies, or even the Netflix series, comment below, let me know. Until next time, just like this camera angle is doing, take the high ground.